angels have an experience. Right. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Good stuff. Good stuff. If you have your Bible with you this morning, turn with me to Matthew the ninth chapter. Matthew the ninth chapter, beginning of the thirty fifth verse. All right. If you've been here the last couple of Sundays, that'll sound familiar to you because this is where we've started the last two Sundays. Matthew the ninth chapter. Say, Brother Billy, when are we going to move on? Whenever we get new orders from headquarters. Amen. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Hallelujah. All right. We'll move on then. Come on. And for those of you who don't know, I'm talking about the Lord. Amen. Yes, Hallelujah. Praise God. I'll go tell somebody I get my notes from headquarters. Oh, <laughs> Hallelujah. Lord. Matthew 9 and 35. <clears throat> the Bible says, And Jesus went about all the cities and villages. Mm -hmm teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion. That's sort of like what we've been talking about. Amen. He was moved with compassion on them because they fainted and were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd. Yeah. He goes on to make what I told you a couple of weeks ago, I believe is one of the most saddest statements in all of the Word of God. Probably that you'll ever hear when He turns to His disciples and He says this, The harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers are few. Come on. He says, Pray ye therefore, the Lord of the harvest, that He will send forth laborers into His harvest. Amen. Laborers. Now that's what we began talking about. The first sermon in this series was help, wanted. Yeah. yeah. All hiring, now hiring all positions. Amen. Yeah. And we talked about how that there are so many people enjoying the blessings of God, but very few working in the field. Yeah. We talked about that old song, "My house is full, but my field is empty. Who will go and work for me today?" Come on. Amen. All of my children want to sit around the table, yeah. but no one wants to work in my fields. Amen. Amen. And honey, we got the same thing today. You might say that was 2,000 years ago, and Jesus was looking at those people in those villages. What does that have to do with us today? Listen, times have changed. Yeah. People are pretty much the same. Amen. Amen. If you read in the Bible over there in the Old Testament where the children of Israel went around and around in circles for 40 years, you'll figure out that, hmm, we got a lot of things in common with those folks. Amen? Right. They complained. Very few times you find them giving thanks. A whole lot of times you find them complaining. Amen? Right. That reminds you of anybody this week? Most of the time this week we spent complaining instead of being thankful and gratitude. Amen? Or most of us did anyway. That's right, bro. Amen? If you were truthful, you'd say, Amen. That is That's me. Right. Because more times than not, yeah. we complain. Amen? Amen? Rather than give thanks for the things that go on in our life. Right. Hallelujah. So you'll find, if you'll look around and you'll read the Bible, and this right here is, my goodness, it is full from front to cover of examples and people that have went through things and people that have messed up. And mm. You'll find that the same mistakes they were making then, people are still making today. Amen. Right. Hallelujah. I know we've, 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 uh, we, we've excelled in electronics and all of the knowledge and everything, but still people are pretty much... The same. Amen. Right. Hallelujah. You're greedy. Without Jesus, you're greedy. Amen. You're greedy and you're full of, of not love. Amen. But self-absorption. And that, that has infiltrated the church today to where now that's the gospel. Amen. That's the right. self-centered gospel. Amen. I seen this week in Los Angeles in the Walmart out there on Black Friday. You probably saw it in the news. Where a woman used black pepper spray on some of the shoppers so that she could get her, I don't know if it was a waffle iron or an Xbox, whatever it was, but yeah. they Amen. were fighting over who would get the big deal, so she pepper sprayed a bunch of them. Amen. Amen. That's right. That, and oh, they showed videos of people after waffle makers. Yeah. Pushing and shoving and screaming and hollering. My goodness. Yeah. Pitiful. That's a Christmas spirit, ain't Pitiful. it? Pitiful. That's a spirit, all right. I don't know if it has anything to do with Christ, but yeah, that's a spirit. That's a spirit of greed. Amen? Antichrist. That's a spirit of Antichrist. Amen? Yeah. That don't have nothing to do. That ain't, that, ain't, that ain't none of the nature of Jesus. Amen? He gave. Amen? The spirit of giving. 
is the spirit that Jesus had, not taking and getting a hold of everything that you can get a hold of. Come on. So we see, as we look across our nation and around the world, and we have that eye on the world today that many have not had before because now we can see instantaneously what's going on in China, right. what's going on you know, in, in the, the United Kingdom, wherever it is. Yeah. But we know today by looking at people and by looking at the Word of God that people haven't changed that much. That's right. Not in their attitudes, in the way they live their lives. Come on. And Jesus saw this in the people. And I can't say that God never gets angry because I believe God does have a holy anger. All right. But I think more times than not, like we talked about last week, I believe God's moved with compassion toward mankind. That's right. And Jesus, when He saw these people that were scattered abroad, mm. they fainted, they were people that and they were as if they had no shepherd. He was moved with compassion and He turns to His disciples and He says, pray that... The Father, pray that He will send workers into the field. Amen. Yeah. Come on. Pray that there will be workers that will go forth into the field and do the work that needs to be done. Because i got news for you. There is a work that is being neglected today. Amen. Oh, we got all kinds of people sitting around sharing their opinions, but we got very few people sharing Jesus. Amen. Come to on. the lost and hurting today. Come on. Amen. Amen. When it comes down to where the rubber meets the road, and I know we don't agree on everything, but I want to know, do you know Jesus? Right. Amen. Have you accepted Him as Lord and Savior? Have you put your faith in His blood that He shed on the cross? Right. If you haven't, I don't care what you think about the Trinity. If you haven't, I don't care what you think about oneness. If you haven't, I don't care what you think about baptism or the Ten Commandments. If you haven't accepted Him and put your faith in Him, you don't miss the whole boat. Come on. Amen. No matter how religious minded you are. Yeah. Some of the most religious minded people in the world died and went to hell. That's right. Come Amen. On. I want to know where your faith is at this morning. Yeah. I want to know if your hope is built on nothing less than Jesus Christ and His righteousness this morning. Amen. Amen. And Jesus was going around to these cities and villages and He was seeing how the people were hurting. And he turned to His disciples and at the time He didn't have very many workers with Him. Amen. He started out with 12. One of them was the devil. Amen. Hallelujah. But these 12 men, you might say, to, you might look around at church this morning and you might think, well, we sure ain't got very many. Jesus didn't start out with very many either. Amen. And according to the book of Acts, these few men that He started with turned the world upside down. Why? Because they became the light that He left them to be. It wasn't because they got caught up in materialism. It wasn't because they got caught up in a self-centered gospel. But it was because they took the truth that they knew. They took Jesus Christ and took Him to the world, That's amen, right, when they were persecuted, the Bible says it scattered them abroad. Yeah. And they took the gospel with them. And they told people about Jesus. Amen. Whatever happened to that? Amen. Whatever happened to sharing Jesus with people? Whatever happened to letting your light shine? Whatever happened to people that would pray for the lost? Whatever happened to people that cared enough to fast and cared enough to pray and cared enough to get down at the altar and say, God, have mercy on the lost and dying world that is undone without you and on their way to a devil's hell? Whatever happened to preachers who were, who were concerned enough to tell somebody that there is a hell. Well, I got news for you. The field is almost empty this morning. Oh, if you look from place to place, you'll see a worker here or there. Yeah. And whenever Jesus looks on the society as we know it today, He has the same plea for you mm -hmm. that He had for His disciples. Yeah. As He looks across the harvest fields of man's souls, mm -hmm. and He says the, the harvest is is plenteous. It is yeah. white unto harvest. Yeah. But where are the workers? Where are the workers? Amen. Yeah. Oh, we've confined our religion to within our four walls. Amen. Yeah. And our little programs and our little our deacon boards and our positions and our religion and our denomination and our arguments and our yeah. fights and our petty things that we all fuss and fight over while a world of lost and dying people go to hell every day yeah. while the church just watches on by like ain't nothing going wrong. Ain't I'm fine. Everybody's fine. No, everybody ain't fine. There are people going to hell today and if somebody don't get out in the field and do the work, it ain't going to change. Amen. We need some people that get concerned about souls. Yes. Amen. Yes, burden. Hallelujah. We need a burden. The Come Spencers on. used to sing a song, let's pray down a burden yeah. for our loved ones out in sin. Oh, Amen. Let's pray down a burden. 
Oh, I guess I just I guess I was born at a time and was raised up in a way that just just allows me to be enough old fashioned yeah. to believe. See, I ain't quite as modern as the preacher you turned on this morning while you were shaving and heard his love and, and peace and prosperity gospel. Amen. Maybe I'm not as modern today as the one that says you can have your best life now. Amen. Oh. Maybe that's why I don't have forty thousand people on Sunday morning. Amen. But I'm just old fashioned enough to remember when Granny got up out of her pew with weeping and, and with hot tears rolling down her face and said, oh, I want you to pray for my neighbor. I haven't been able to sleep all week. I haven't been able to eat all week. i got a burden for them. Pray for my loved ones. Amen. Maybe I'm old-fashioned enough to believe that a burden and a crime and a weeping heart actually moved the heart of God and saw people saved. Not because you had to get out and do any physical labor, but because you took the time to turn off the television, turn off the radio, put down your book, and skip down on your knees and say, God, save them. Move on their heart before it's eternity. Oh, God, give us some people who will weep all night long. Some preachers that will preach under the anointing and the power of the Holy Ghost so that we can see souls saved before it's too late. The harvest is plenteous, but the laborers are few. Amen. What do we do? We got so many Christian couch potatoes. Yeah. They sit around, well, I can't do nothing. I can't do anything. I don't have much to offer. Oh, but just give it to him. Amen. Come on. Give it to him. And so we need some people like that lad. When there was 5,000 people out there hungry. And he said, what can we give them? And the disciples said, bro, there's a lad here. He got two fishes and five loaves. I know it ain't very much. But thank God that lad didn't look at the crowd and say, you know, I don't have much. So I ain't going to share with them what I got. He said, here, Lord. Oh, I don't have a lot. But what I got, I give to you. And in the hands of Jesus, it fed 5,000 people. And there was enough left over to take up 12 basketfuls and take it into town and feed somebody else. We need somebody that will hit their knees and say, God, I ain't much. But what I am, I give to you. God, I can't do much. But what I can do, I'll do for you. We need somebody. Somebody this morning. Praise God. To go outside the door. Yes, sir. And be the light that you're supposed to be. Yes, sir. You see, Jesus told them, while I'm in the world, I'm the light of the world. Yeah. But he didn't stop there. Come on. He turns to them in another place and says, You are the light yes. of the world. That's right. Let your light so shine before yes. men so that they'll see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Amen. Amen. Come on, I'm telling you this morning. I know we hear from people all the time, I can't do nothing. I can't give nothing. I've got very little. Yeah, but in the hands of God, little is much. If you'll put it in His hands and let it multiply it. Amen. What about the little widow woman that had the little bit of meal and the little bit of oil? What if she looked at the prophet and said, No, no, I can't afford to give. Come on, brother. Her and her boy would be dead. That's it. Elijah would have found something deep somewhere else. Come on. Because God's always going to make a way. But that little widow woman mm -hmm. and her son would have died. That's right, brother. Amen. Say it. I know there are people that have been fighting against mm -hmm. sending an offer to this ministry because you can't afford to give. Mm -hmm. Yeah. God will bring it in some other way. That's right. But you may not survive. Right. Amen. Come on. You may not survive. Because she took what she had. See, we need some people that'll take what little they got mm -hmm. and let God use it. Right. That'll take the talent. What? And I say little because that's our mindset. What you've got is big in the eyes of God. Oh, Amen. God. He has given you talent. He has given you strength. He has given you the light inside of you. When I say little, I'm talking about our old carnal mindset. Amen. I'm not belittling you because I told you two weeks ago, every job that we do in the, in the work of the Lord is important. Amen. Yeah. All the way from the preacher, and I don't know where it goes down to because yeah. as far as I'm concerned, everybody's on the same level playing field. Amen. But maybe you think the one who cleans the, the commode ain't as important as the preacher. But I'm telling you, if he quit cleaning the commode, sooner or later you'd realize 
how important he was. Amen. When you decided I'm going to hold it till I get home because that bathroom's so nasty I ain't going to go in it. Amen. Then you would realize how important it is that somebody takes Mr. Scrubby Bubbles, amen, and sprays it in the commode and wipes it out every now and then. We need some people that get concerned enough with the work of God that they won't feel put out. Come on, say it. They won't feel put upon when it comes to do something for Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. So he looks on the field and he says, Oh, there's such a great harvest out there. But there's very few laborers. Amen. Very few workers. Come on. My goodness. And he's moved with compassion. And he tells his disciples, he says, Pray. Therefore, the Lord of the harvest, that He will send forth laborers. laborers. And we talked, after that we talked about the husbandman of the vineyard that mm -hmm. went out and hired workers mm -hmm. at daybreak and He sent them to the field. Mm -hmm. And I think He went out the third hour and He went out the sixth hour and the ninth hour. I don't know, maybe the eleventh hour. He went out the eleventh hour. Come on. And each time He sends workers to the field... We find him asking some people there in the marketplace. He says, why stand ye here idle? And their excuse was, well, no man has hired us. And that's pretty... Listen, you may think, what's that got to do with this sermon? But you know how many people today say, well, I just don't feel like God called me to do nothing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's right. Oh, I've heard that one. You've been in the ministry for 25 years. You've heard about all of them. Amen. Yeah. Well, you think you have, and then somebody comes up with one that knocks you for a loop. Amen. Yeah. And you think, well, I've heard it all. Amen. That's right. But people will say, I can't do nothing. Yeah. Well, let me ask you something. Can you pray? Amen. Come on. Can you request prayer for somebody? Come on. Can you fast, maybe? Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Can you request prayer for somebody at church? Right. Can you open the door for that poor old disabled one that can't get out the door on their own? Amen? Yeah. Can you go outside the walls of the church and actually show somebody out there the love of Jesus instead of your old stinking attitude? Can you do that? Come on, brother. Can we show Jesus to people? That's good. Oh, we think that in order to show Jesus, we've got to find us a street corner and say, Behold, all you sinners! Yeah. Amen. Repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Yeah. And nothing wrong with that if that's what you feel the Lord leading you to do. Come on. Oh, honey, but you can win a lot of them by letting that light that's inside of you yeah. shine into their darkness. That's right. And they'll see that you got something hmm, that they don't have. Right. What do they expect you to do when you get in Walmart? Then the line is a mile long and it's taking forever to get you up there. They expect you to complain. Yeah. And most of the time, we don't let them down. Ah, that's Amen. True. Most of the time, they get exactly what they expected. That's the truth. What's your neighbor expect you to do when he when he does something you don't like? Yeah. He expects you to get mad. Yeah. And most of the time, he is not disappointed. Amen. That's right. <laughs> Amen. 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 What does your boss expect you to do whenever he puts more work on you than most people would think they could handle? Come on. Right. He expects you to throw a fit. And most of the time, he ain't disappointed. Amen. He right. gets exactly what he expected. That's right. Oh, but those times, those few times that we get a we get a grip and a rain on our old carnal flesh and say, wait a minute. Yeah. I'm fixing to give God thanks in this even though I don't like it. Right. I'm going to put a smile on my face. Uh, I'm going to let my light shine. Then they start scratching their head wondering what is it that they have that I don't have. Amen. They must have something that I need because I don't like that way. That's letting your light shine. That's good. Amen. That's good preaching. Showing your love to one another. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. So there's a lot of jobs. I told you this before. Say, I can't preach. Oh, there's a million jobs I'm preaching. Amen? That's right. There's all kinds of positions that need to be filled. That's right. We need people that are witness. We need people that are pray. We need people that are fast. We need right. people that are show up to church. Amen? Amen? We need people that will do something that will let their light shine for the people that they meet every day. On. Every one of us can do that. Come on. We need some people like Nehemiah. Mm -hmm. When the devil tries, you to, tries to get you to give up, you say, hey, why should the work cease? This is more important. Amen? So then we learn how Paul talked about us as a body. Come on. And we learn, Brother Sleece, how that every member of our body is important to us. 
I asked you last Sunday, how many people in here want to get rid of a pinky today? I didn't have no takers, brother Dad. <laughs> how many of you would like to part with your left hand? I didn't have nobody say, oh, 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 me, me. Uh, how many of you today would like to get rid of your, they call it your pinky toe? Yeah. Your little toe today? Yeah. Oh, did nobody stick their hand up? Uh, Somebody scratched their head. I thought I had a volunteer at once, but they let their, put their hand down. No volunteers, but we as the body of Christ today, Brother Scott, so many times feel like that there are, dis there are dispensable members within the body. Yeah. Members that we don't have to have. Come on now. Amen. We feel like, well, you know, we don't really have to have him. That's when he testifies, he talks so long. Yeah. It just bores me. Yeah. I just wish he wouldn't even show up. Come on. Yeah. All that one that, that's been coming. Yeah. I don't know how long it's been since he had a bath. <laughs> but I hope he don't sit by me today on the pew. Amen. Maybe he won't be there. How many, oh my goodness. <laughs> there was a couple of years ago. Oh, can I confess on something on myself? There was a couple of years ago when I was going to another church. Come on. And when I would, we'd pull up in the parking lot, and if I saw their car there, I'd think, oh no. Mm. They're here. Yeah. Amen. Uh -huh. Oh, these old fashioned, these long winded, and they got on my nerves. Uh -huh. Amen. Come on. <clears throat> Uh, I think, oh no. And don't tell me y'all ain't never thought that before. Maybe not exactly the way I did, yeah. but you saw somebody show up and something inside of you kind of cringed. Yeah. Amen. Come on. Come on. Maybe not exactly the same way I thought, oh no. Amen. That's true. <laughs> but sometime or another, there's somebody that we thought the church would be better off without. Yeah. Come on, say it. The service would be better if they hadn't have been there. Yeah. Come on. Yes. It was a hindrance. Amen. But I couldn't get no takers that wanted to get rid of their pinky. Yeah. I couldn't get rid of no takers that wanted to get rid of their hand. I couldn't get no takers that wanted to get rid of one of their eyes. Amen. Because none of the oh no, we gotta have all of our members. Yes, we do. We gotta have every member of the body of Christ so that the body will work right. Amen. Say it. Say it. Oh, by the way, I don't feel that way about those folks today. By the time that the uh -huh. Lord got through with me and dealing with me and I spent some time on my knees, yeah. I loved those people. Amen. And yeah. I, I like to see them today. Amen. It Amen. blessed my heart. If they walked through that door, I'd shout to Isles. Praise Amen. God. Maybe they passed on now. I don't know if they's old. Huh. Hallelujah. <clears throat> the body. Mm. Many members. Mm. Many members. Mm. My goodness, and every one of us have something to do. So we've looked at this thing and we've seen how that we all have jobs. Yeah. I told you how when I used to work in the field that one would do something, somebody else do something else. We had all these workers. Amen. Yeah. In the old time days, they'd have somebody poking the hole, somebody dropping the seed, and somebody covering up yeah. the seed. And there's all kinds of jobs. Paul said that one waters, another plants, God gives the or God, one plant, one waters, God gives the increase. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. So there's many jobs. There's, we're all a body. Listen to this. 1 Corinthians 12 and 21. You don't have to go there if you don't want to because I'm fixing to move on. 1 Corinthians 12 and 21. We covered this last week. Paul said, The eye cannot say unto the hand, I have no need of thee. Yeah. Nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. But we say that to church people all the time. We may not say it with our mouth, but we say it with our actions. Amen. Oh. How many times has somebody left out of your church and they felt unwanted and unloved and unappreciated because you acted bad toward them? Either they got your seat. Oh, I can preach on that today. Amen. We got church members that's got their name, not physically, but in their mind, carved into a pew. And if a lot dare any lost person to come in and sit down in their pew. Amen. Oh, I never. You're sitting in my seat. I ain't never in my life. Oh, and you better not ever in your game in your life either. Because you're offending people. Amen. You're running people off with your stinking attitude. Come on, brother. That's good. So running people out the door. Amen. Amen. But we all the time make people feel unwelcome. Yes, sir. Amen. Come on. This is name much more those members of the body which seem to be more feeble are necessary. Do you hear that? Yes, sir. And those members of the body which we think to be less honorable, upon these we bestow more abundant honor, mm -hmm. and our comely and our uncomely parts mm -hmm. have more abundant comeliness. In other words, those parts that we don't think much about. Yeah. We don't think they're very comely. We don't think they're very attractive. We don't think they're very needed. Mm -hmm. They're needed. Mm -hmm. Amen. Come on. So we covered that last week. And all that's my introduction.
Come on. Amen. Go with me to Acts, the third chapter, and the first verse. <clears throat> Acts 3 and 1. Acts of the Apostles, third chapter, first verse. Most scholars believe that Luke wrote it. Acts, the third chapter, first verse. Now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer. Oh, Brother Billy, what are you going there for? We've heard this before. Shut up and listen. At the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour. Now the Bible doesn't say, but we can assume today, that they weren't the only born-again believers going up to the temple at the hour of prayer. Come on. But we find them doing something that apparently all of the other believers that went up to the temple that day either didn't have time for, didn't want to be bothered with, didn't consider it important enough. Mm -hmm. Can you see where I'm going with this this morning? Amen. <clears throat> they go up to the temple at the hour of prayer and a certain man laying from his mother's womb was carried and the Bible says whom they laid at daily at, at the gate of the temple, which is called beautiful, to ask alms of them that entered into the temple daily. Every day. Yeah. This man laid at the temple gate. Amen. With Christians. Yeah. Born again believers. Mm -hmm. Hustling on by. Yeah. Amen. That's right. In a hurry. Gotta get in there and do my religious duty. Yeah. Maybe that's what some of them thought, Brother Slees. Mm -hmm. Oh. Got to get to church to do my religious duty. You don't have time to help mm -hmm. this one in need. Yeah, right. come on. Amen. That's it, brother. So we always hear about Peter and John because they're the two that stopped. Mm -hmm. but what about the crowd that passed them up? Right. right. That's where most of the church is at today. Amen. Ah, too busy to be bothered with the beggar beside the temple gate begging alms. Amen. Too busy to be bothered with that one that is not very comely. That one that is not very beautiful. That one that doesn't smell. More than likely he didn't smell too good. Amen. Maybe he smelled like a rose. I don't know, but I'm assuming today that he didn't smell all that great. That he laid there beside of the temple and he begged for alms while people were passing by. And I'm assuming today that Peter and John were not the only religious folk that passed him by, that, that was coming up that way. I'm assuming today that out of all of the crowd that went up at the hour of prayer into the temple, only two of them cared enough to stop and share what they had with him that was hurting and dying and it ain't changed much today. That's right, brother. We got a whole nation that claims to be Christian. Amen. Very few of them will stop and share Jesus with you. That's right, Amen. Very few of them will stop and share Jesus. I'm preaching to us this morning. Amen. I want to know this morning how many times are we going to walk by the lame at the gate before we stop and help them. Amen. I want to know this morning how many times are we going to ignore or avoid the situation to keep from getting involved. Amen. I want to know this morning how many people have to die and go to hell before the church will wake up and hit their knees and cry out, God save them before it's too late. Use me. Use me as a worker in your field. Praise God. That's what I want to know this morning. Come on. Amen. That's good preaching. Amen. Amen. Say, Brother Billy, you're stepping on my toes. That's all right. I'm That's stepping right. on my mind too. Amen. Amen. So out of all the people that go up to the temple, Brother Sleece, mm -hmm. and I guarantee you, I don't have the facts to back this up, but I don't see how you could argue yeah. that there had to be more people that went up at the hour of prayer. Come on. And this man had laid there every day. Mm -hmm. So unless this was oh, this is the first day we've had an hour. No, it wasn't. They had walked past him every day. Every day he laid there hurting. Yeah. And nobody cared enough. Amen. 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 Nobody cared enough mm -hmm. to stop. Yeah. And hell, oh, they might have dropped a quarter in his bucket. Yeah. Amen. Come on. Oh, God. Help us. When I go in Walmart mm -hmm. and the Salvation Army people ringing their bell, mm -hmm. I stop there, you know, and I drop in what I can or maybe what I want to. Because mm 
Because, you know, usually we drop a dollar in there and then go spend five at McDonald's for a hamburger. Yeah. Amen. That's true. But I wonder today, and that's good because they need that money to help people. Yes, sir. They need that money to help people. And I'm not trying to persuade you not to help us out. By goodness, give them as much as you can right. to help people. That's right. And other organizations. Come on. But the most important need that that beggar had at the gate was not new clothes. Was not his dinner for that day. The most important need that that man had, the most the thing that hurt on him the most wasn't his crippled legs. Oh, wow. It was crippled soul. Amen. It was lost heart. Amen. He was lost and undone. And Peter and John, the Bible says, as they walked by him, the Bible says that this crippled man that had been laying there watching, I guarantee you, watching religious people go by all day long. Amen. But there's at least watching people. Maybe some of them he had known. Maybe he had seen them out there rubbing elbows with the big religious folk yeah. and talking holy. Come on. But never one time. Oh, uh, uh, that, that, that gets right. my indignation yeah. up. Whether righteous or unrighteous, I don't know. Mm -hmm. But to see people who think they are so holy that they wouldn't give you the time of day. Oh. Amen. I wish they knew how bad that stunk in the nostrils of God. Amen. I don't want to hear. I don't want to. I don't want you sharing nothing with me. If, 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 you, if you can't help somebody that, that's hurting and that needs some help, amen, but you can rub elbows with the preachers and you can talk about the new city and you can talk about the 44 mines and the 15 gallbladders or whatever deep mysteries you know about. You talk about all these things, but you can't help somebody because you're too spiritual. You're a fool today, amen. If you cannot help your brother that is in need, you have denied the very God that you're trying to serve in your heart. Amen. My goodness. So they walk right on by. Some of them probably didn't just put him out of their mind. They probably looked on him and thought, pitiful. We'll do something about it, hypocrite. Yeah. Amen. Help somebody. Don't shun away from those that need to hear about Jesus. All right. Amen. I guarantee you we had preachers flocking. Who's that big guy with the funky hair that ran for president for a little while? He's got a bunch of money. I can't think of his name. <clears throat> that real wild hair. Donald Trump. I guarantee you we'd have a multitude of preachers flocking to him if he wanted to hear about Jesus. Very few you're going to find on Skid Row today hugging that drunk covered in his own vomit. Amen. Amen. My goodness. Praise the Lord. Maybe this is more sensitive to me because maybe the folks that God brings along my path usually don't smell good. <laughs> Amen. Come on. Oh, honey, but I've hugged some. They didn't smell too good. <laughs> but when I hugged them, I felt the love of God like I ain't felt before. Amen. All right. Hallelujah. We are His arm extended. Yeah. Amen. That's it. We are, his, we are His arms extended to a lost and hurting and dying world. Amen. Oh my goodness. Hallelujah. We are His hand extended today to help those that are in need. Amen. On, there was a little girl she was scared of storms. and Her mama put her in her bed and she said, Honey, don't be scared. Jesus is with you. Yeah. Don't be scared. Jesus is with you. She went into the other room and a big clap of thunder and a flash of lightning. The little girl screamed out. Her mama ran in there and she put her arms around her. And the little girl said, hey, I'm scared, Mommy. She said, well, I told you. Jesus is here with you. She said, yeah, but sometimes, Mommy, it helps if you can feel somebody's arms around you. Yeah. yeah. Amen. Yeah. Oh, you'd be surprised today what a hug will do for somebody. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hello. You are His arms. I've prayed the prayer. Lord, let them feel Your arms of love around them. Amen. Lord, let them feel our